in particular, it looks at the division between those activities that are managed and organised internally and those activities that are outsourced. Over time, we've seen a big change between the use of outsourcing, which has grown dramatically over time. There are many more companies now that subcontract and do other activities for multinational enterprises around the world. And this, this, the growth of this market in outsourcers and people who are able to provide activities for the multinational enterprise means that the global spread of multinationals is much more diverse. The company is now much more like a network and not all the activities are internally controlled. In fact, a saying goes that you don't have to own something to control it. And many of the activities that multinational enterprise effectively control are not owned by them. So multinationals if control far more of the world economy than is measured in direct foreign investment statistics. Their use of outsourcing, subcontracting and other forms of joint venture and cooperative agreements. The spread of multinationals therefore has increased as they have evolved means of doing business in a variety of different economies, some of which they will have invested in, others in which they will just have contractual arrangements. Thus the global factory re represents a very flexible means of doing business. And when companies are challenged by changes in regulation or changes in costs or changes in exchange rates, they've developed means to adapt to this. The global factory therefore is a very resilient and very flexible method of doing business abroad. The book that we are completing looks at lots of different aspects of multinationals as they evolve this global factory system. It looks at marketing, it looks at financing, it looks at all the different ways that they enter and operate business in the world. At the moment we're seeing a major challenge to companies that operate internationally. There are a lot of people who are advocating protectionism, breaking up multinationals, substituting domestic production for activities that have previously been run by multinationals. And this means that the flexibility and the resilience of the global factory is challenged in ways that it hasn't been challenged before. We hope to be able to analyse the response of multinationals to this anti-globalisation trend and to show the strategies that enable firms to continue to operate even when external conditions are not particularly favourable towards them.